this war has simultaneously dramatically sharpened the geopolitical great power politics are back view of what is wrong in the world. Uh, and at the same time, led us to focus a lot more on the global challenges of energy shortages, climate more broadly, food security. If you think about the Biden national security strategy issued in October, they said for the first time, these two sets of challenges are equal, equally important, and both of them are dramatically sharpened by the Ukraine war. I will say, I think longer term, this war will uh, mark a high point in the willingness of, of nations to stand up for the world of the UN Charter, but it will also be a turning point in where nations get their energy and will speed us to a green transition. Tom? I don't know how the international system finally heals from the reality that one of the permanent members of the UN Security Council is a nuclear armed rogue state now. Um, this is the thing that kind of keeps me up at night, that there is no real exit for Russia, even in the medium term. Even if Putin were to leave the scene tomorrow, um, there is a reckoning here. I mean, Russia got the benefit of the doubt after 1991. After 70 years of communism, the rest of the world said, bygones, you know, World War I, the Bolshevik Revolution, a lot of bad things happened, we understand, you know, now this is Russia's chance. Well, 30 years later, there, there isn't another chance. I mean, Russia is not getting the benefit of the doubt the second time around, uh, but we are stuck with all the institutions in which Russia ha is going to punch above its weight in, in every way. This is now, you know, a the one of the most powerful countries in the world, at least by you know, me measured in megatonnage, deciding that it will uh, um, obliterate its neighbors at will. And I, I'm not sure. I wish I could say I, I see the long term here, but I'm not sure um, how this ends um, with the international system that we once knew intact. I think I, I want to be optimistic and say I think the international institutions are going to prevail, that Russia will be the part that has to change over over time. But um, this is something that I didn't, I just didn't think I would see 30 years after the end of the Cold War. I don't agree with Tom that there's this dramatic change where suddenly one of the, the, the great powers, of one of the permanent members of the, of the Security Council is a nuclear rogue state. I, I agree that that may be the way the Europeans see it more than they ever have before, maybe the Americans. That is not true of the rest of the world. I think the rest of the world, starting with India, let's just take India, who, of whom we have courted six ways from Sunday. India basically says, I'm not about to give up relations with Russia. Russia supplies a lot of our arms. And frankly, you remember that Iraq thing? No, you are not a nuclear rogue state, but you have flouted Article 2.4 with equal abandon. I really think many, many other nations in the world are looking at this war and saying this is a North war. This is an East-West war. It's not our war. And the biggest changes I see in the international system are all those countries. An Indian recently said to me that instead of talking about the global South, we should talk about the global majority. All those countries are demanding their place at the uh, global institutional table. And that means a lot of turbulence uh, in lots of different parts of the system. If the institutions hold, um, we will have no one to thank more than Vladimir Putin. Uh, this was, I mean, it, this is proof again that Vladimir Putin is a terrible strategist uh, because the Russians were getting what they wanted. Institutions were weakening. And suddenly, you know, 32 nations in NATO, including Finland and Sweden, the European Union actually acting like a transnational union that has common interest. Uh, the Russians have created exactly the world they thought they were going to forestall. Tom, what's the biggest mistake, miscalculation that Zelensky's made so far? Um, I think most of those were at the beginning uh, and just before the war of saying things like, don't, you know, stop saying we're going to be invaded. You know, I think to take a guy who's, you know, primarily had been in the entertainment industry, not in as a national leader, those are pretty forgivable mistakes. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of mistakes 
sense. Um, you know, in part, the hype, is, as Anne Marie said, you know, the horrendous performance of the Russian military is making the Ukrainians look, um, you know, pretty good by comparison. Um, there is now and then, I think his frustration leads him to kind of lash out about you're not sending enough and it's not fast enough as though <clears throat> Western countries have no other interest in the world, but, but Ukraine. Um, but I think that's to be, you know, the guys hunkered down in a war zone that I think that's, that's um, pretty forgivable. 